One thing I believe separates beginners from more experienced developers is how they handle problems or errors inside of their apps. Let's say you fetch some data in React and for any reason, it doesn't even matter, you have no control over it, this fetch call right here takes really long to respond to your request. Now what do you do? Do you show a loading state for those 20 seconds it takes to respond? That would make your users hate using your app because it feels super slow. And actually, it turns out there's a really cool trick I want to show you in this video that solves exactly this problem. Let's say you had any React component in which you want to fetch some data, for example, on a button press. What should happen is when you press this button, a function that fetches the data should be called. Let's call it fetch data. As the name might suggest, in here goes the fetch call to get whatever data you want from your or any other API endpoint. However, this API could take any amount of time, 20 seconds, 30 seconds to respond to your request, and the users in that time would be waiting for your app to respond. To abort this request whenever we want, let's add an abort controller, a native API, no imports needed, and pass the signal to this fetch call. Doing this, we can limit the time the API call can maximum take, for example, to two seconds, after which we will automatically abort the request. And that's some really simple logic to get a very nice effect. Let's take a look at the network tab in here. On the left side, we have the button that fetches our data, and we're gonna time out this response after two seconds. Let's see. Okay, it says status canceled right here in the network request, which is perfect. And you can see in the time, I'm not sure if I can zoom in. Yes, I can. There we go, two seconds, because that's precisely when this controller.abort is fired from the set timeout. Then this fetch request is canceled. By the way, the only purpose of this API call we're making right here is to wait for five seconds and then return any response. So we're just mocking an API response right here. And this approach works. However, it becomes pretty convoluted, pretty bad once we add more and more fetch requests, then this approach might not be the ideal way. Let me show you what I mean. Let's revisit the original fetch data function and change it up a little to make it a bit better. Now we're gonna make use of an API that is called promise.race inside of a try catch block that allows us to have multiple promises and once the first one resolves or rejects, the entire promise.race resolves or rejects. What that means is this promise.race will always finish after at most 1000 milliseconds because that is when we reject it, finishing the entire promise.race. If the fetch request is not done by then, we can still execute all the code that's left and show the user, for example, an error state instead of keeping them in a loading state all the time. Let's quickly add a log right here once the data is fetched and then we'll also see if the promise gets rejected right here in the error because once we reject, we will land in the error block. Let's save this file and let's see what happens. Once we click this button right here, after one second, we're gonna see the promise was rejected. We should be done. However, there's one really interesting thing happening here and that is we still see the fetched right here. That means our promise did get canceled successfully and we can't show the error state after exactly one second right here. And then display that error to the user in some kind of UI showing them the API didn't respond. However, one really interesting behavior is that this fetch request still finishes. Why is that? Because even though the promise.race is super advantageous compared to the first approach with just the abort controller, because in here we can do any amount of different API calls and at maximum they will all take one second, what we specify right here. The main problem is that these are never actually canceled. Do you remember the abort controller from earlier? Well, if we want to combine these two approaches to make the perfect timeout, so to say, then we need to combine the controller with this promise.race. Let's declare a new controller pass the signal into all the fetch requests that we want to cancel if they take too long. And finally, instead of console logging, we are gonna abort all the fetch requests that took longer than our specified timeout, in our case, 1000 milliseconds. And just like that, our code behaves exactly as we expected. Either this fetch request right here will resolve in under whatever duration we specify right here, doesn't really matter, or if the API does not respond within that time, we can show an error state to the user and abort all the requests that we have up here. We can even pass the exact same signal into all of them because essentially we want to abort all requests that take too long to display the error state to the user. Let's reload this page, click on the fetch data and what we expect to happen is just that, that after exactly one second, the timeout we have specified right here, I didn't save. If I save this, it would be two seconds. Let's go back, click fetch data right here. Four calls are fired. All of them get canceled after exactly two seconds or 2.01 seconds 
because we are done waiting. The API just took too long and now we want to display an error state to the user. Of course, in practice, this would be longer than two seconds, maybe five or 10 seconds, because you would really expect an API to answer after like five seconds. I didn't know about this technique before, and I think it's really, really cool to make sure your user has an amazing experience on your app. Hey, I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to learn how to properly handle loading states in React to make your app feel super fast, almost instant, check out this video right here. It's about optimistic UI updates and how useful they are in your app. I really hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you in the next one. Have a good one and bye bye.